So now what I have to do is, is I've got the bridge and it's, uh, it's not finally polished, but it's almost polished. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the plastic over these wings so that they, the plastic duplicates the exact curvature of each side of the bridge. But before I do that, I want to take some um, wax paper and um, protect the, uh, the shellac on the, on the bridge from the moisture inside the, uh, on, on the moisture of the plastic. Um, <clears throat> so what I do is I just uh, tape this. It's kind of too big actually. Tape this like so, so that it's covering the, the wings of the bridge. Just wrap it around on this side. Okay. Take a piece of tape and <laughs> too short now. Just uh, tape it. Like so, <clears throat> do that for the other side. Because the, uh, the, the plastic will damage <clears throat> the, the finish a little because it's hot. When I put it on here, it's going to be hot and it'll kind of mess up the finish a bit. So I got to trim these edges off with a razor blade and a piece of wood. I'll just use this. So I'll just trim the edge off like that. Okay, so the plastic is boiling very nicely in there. I'll just let it uh, boil a bit, cook up real good. I have a, a, a diamond file. Uh, this is top coat diamond 320, I believe. And I, I just use this, I turn it over to the, just the other side. And um, I have two of these actually, this is a 120. Great for doing frets. Um, so I put the bridge on here, like so, place it on there. I then reach in my pot here and get the plastic out. It's a gooey bunch of stuff. And it's hot too. Whew. But I just kind of roll it up into a ball. You got to do it while it's hot. Take a piece off. Kind of roll it up into a smaller ball. Kind of squish it out a little bit. That like so. And I put it right there. And I do it again. Like so. Okay. Then I take this heavy piece, it's kind of heavy, and I just use it like a press and I just press down. Okay. I let that dry or cool and then I take it off and then when I take it off those pieces of plastic can form exactly to the shape of the bridge and I'll explain why that is very important, crucially important. In Okay, 
while the um, plastic is cooling off, I'll take this opportunity to talk about something I think is really, really important. And, you know, not a lot of people understand uh, just how important it is. Um, I'm referring to hide glue um, because I'll be gluing the bridge on with hide glue. This uh, particular hide glue I get from Bajorn Industries. Um, I think you can see the uh, address there in the, uh, in the picture. And um, it is grade 251 high glue. This is uh, what I like to use for uh, instruments. Some of the high glue in different grades, stronger grades, they use to actually etch glass. And it is so strong. Um, you don't want it that strong. Um, you want it slightly flexible and, and uh, you know, so this is the best grade, 251. Um, I use high glue to glue on the, uh, the bridge. And um, I use it because it doesn't, sh uh, it doesn't creep and it dries to a crystalline state. And this is really vitally important uh, anytime you're, you glue anything to the top of the guitar. Um, it, it, tight bond glue is, uh, is uh, like a, a petrol-based glue, and it's just plastic, basically. And, and it creeps, and I've seen bridges creep. I haven't seen any on my guitars, actually, thank God, that I made, you know, 30 years ago with that. But I've seen some Martin guitar bridges creep forward uh, using high glue um, and old, uh, you know, guitars like that. And uh, it, it's just not, it, it's a, if you think about it, why would you want to have a plastic insulator between the bridge and the soundboard? It, it just doesn't make sense. Um, so this is why I use high glue. And it, it dries to a crystalline state. It's uh, the strongest glue I've come across. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Um, and, but it's really difficult to work with. So. I'm going to be getting into that right now, but for, for now, here's uh, you. I bought that uh, hot water heater there, the pot from Walmart for 12 bucks. You can buy these fancy glue pots, you know, woodworker supply for 150 bucks, but it's, it's stupid. Um, then I have a jar, and then I just have a, a temperature gauge that you stick into a piece of lamb or something, and. Uh, I'll, I'll get into the, temp, the correct temperature and all that in just a moment. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to mix hide glue. And there's probably, you know, a hundred different ways people do this. But for me, I, uh, I like to mix it in a small jar. Uh, so, you know, making a huge pot of glue just goes to waste because I use this uh, only for certain applications and one is the bridge and you don't you don't need that much uh, uh, glue for the bridge so I, I put in uh, this is one tablespoon actually tablespoon okay um, one tablespoon and then the water ratio is um, basically one to one um, I like to do it slightly more diluted because the thing with high glue is it, it gels instantly after it starts to cool. And the thicker it is, the, 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 the worse it gels. And, and uh, it, it, it's, uh, there is a point where you can get it too thick and it, it just gels instantly and it, it doesn't uh, really uh, sink into the wood. It, 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 the moisture just kind of gels and, and it doesn't allow it to, to sink into the wood. 